So when we're using CircuitLab to create a circuit that has resistors, inductors, capacitors with an AC source, we have to analyze this circuit a little differently. So we can't use voltmeters to measure voltages and so on. So we have to use the simulate mode and actually do what's called a time sweep. So I think at this point everybody could build this circuit because we've had some experience with this. But we have to make sure we put a ground in. We want the ground, one side of the ground, to be connected to the voltage supply. So I'm going to go ahead and hit uh, simulate on here, and we're doing a time domain uh, sweep. Now this source has a frequency of one kilohertz, which means that the period of one oscillation is one millisecond. So I want to make sure that my time sweep is going to be in terms of milliseconds, and you'll notice that I'm starting it at three milliseconds. So I'm actually starting this after three periods of oscillation, and there's a reason for that. If you start at zero, there's some interesting or weird things that sort of happen at the beginning. So we're skipping over that initial like closing the switch situation, and then I'm going for uh, up to five milliseconds, which is essentially two periods of oscillation. And then I have my time step to be very small in terms of milliseconds. This is actually probably too small, but that's, that's okay. I'll leave it like that. I'm also going to skip the initial conditions. Now I have to decide on the outputs. So I'm going to add an expression and I can come over here to the side of the voltage supply and I can click on where when it kind of highlights that side and it will tell me the voltage at that node for that supply relative to the ground. And it'll also tell me the current. But the problem is, is that the way the current is measured in here, um, it does depend on entering and exiting. So I'm actually going to close that because I don't want to measure that current there. I'm going to add another expression, and I'm going to measure the current here. And I'm going to then get rid of the voltage at that node. So this will actually tell me the voltage across the supply as a function of time and also the current, the correct current in my circuit as a function of time in terms of the way that we define current as being the, the flow of positive charge for this class. The other thing that I might be interested in knowing is what is the voltage across the inductor. So I'm going to add another um, output here and I can go ahead and I can click on that. I don't care about the current here because I have a series circuit and all the current should be the same, so I'm going to go ahead and remove that. Then I can run a time domain simulation. And the output at the top here is the voltage. And on the bottom, it's weird, it says voltage, but it's actually the current. And you can see there's amps over here, or milliamps. And you'll notice that you can move along this and it'll tell you different values. So what we're going to be interested in is, you know, how does the voltage of the source, which is the first one that I put in, compare to the current in terms of their phase uh, shift? So what I can do is I can get rid of the inductor for right now, and I can grab these um, scales, not scales, I don't know what you call them, just um, sort of reference lines on here, and they actually usually are at the edges, so they kind of disappear. But if you come over here, you can grab one, and I'm going to put it at the maximum voltage over here, which in this case is 20 volts. And then I'm going to grab the one on the bottom, and you notice the top and the bottom are actually connected, and I'm going to put it at the top of the current in this one. So I have to get close. I'm just going to say... somewhere in there. Okay, I'm not going to worry too much about it right now. So what I have is I'm measuring um, the time between the maximum voltage and the maximum current, and this is going to tell us the phase shift between the voltage across to the source and the current that's going through the circuit. And I can read that by reading the delta T, because delta T here measures the time frame between these two positions, and I'm reading that as 165.2 microseconds. So my phase angle in, in terms of time would be 165.2 microseconds. I don't think, I'm not sure I have everything lined up exactly right, but that's okay. And the voltage is leading because it's max comes first and then the current. So that's how we could 
measure those. And we can, of course, measure the actual current values and voltage values by just getting up there on the top and measuring, you know, there's 20 volts. And over here, the current is like 187.4 milliamps. So uh, if you want to remove any of the, the graphs on there, you just click on that graph and it removes it, or you can put them back on. Okay. So if we wanted to measure the phase difference between the voltage supply and the inductor, I can go through that same process. So I'm going to remove the inductor, and I'm going to take the first um, reference line and make sure it's lined up with the maximum of the source. And then I'm going to go ahead and remove that, and I'm going to put the um, inductor in there. And I'm going to take that, and I'm going to move it so that it's at the maximum for the inductor. And it's just easier to see it this way. And uh, I, I don't know. I'm just estimating right now. So someplace like that. And then I can put them both back on. And so now I have a phase difference between the voltage across the inductor and the voltage across the source. And if I go over here to this delta T, that gives me the phase angle in terms of time, and then we can convert that back into um, degrees. So that's how you're going to use these um, this simulator when we have an AC source. We're going to have to make a simulation over time, and then we can basically analyze this as if it's like an oscilloscope.